All right, then let's talk about the U.S. markets, where the stocks closed mostly higher, led by the healthcare and utilities sectors, while the Dow retreated as shares of Boeing Company came under heavy pressure following a fatal crash over the weekend of a 737 Max aircraft. On the data front, the U.S. Consumer Price Index rose two tenths of a percent in February, in line with expectations. CNBC's Josh Lipton gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. U.S. stocks finishing the day mixed, the Dow off 96 points, the S&P up 8, and the Nasdaq gaining 32. Boeing down another 6% today as several governments around the world order the company's 737 MAX 8 aircraft temporarily grounded after it was involved in a second deadly crash in just five months over the weekend. President Donald Trump taking to Twitter today to say planes have become too complex. Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg talking to the president today and reassuring him of the aircraft's safety. Meanwhile, Marlboro cigarette maker Altria under pressure after the FDA named the director of the National Cancer Institute as acting. Acting FDA Commissioner Ned Sharpless will serve as the interim head of the agency in the absence of Scott Gottlieb, who announced he would be stepping down as commissioner last week. And U.S. consumer prices rising for the first time in four months in February, lifted by gains in the cost of food, gasoline and rents. However, the pace of increase was still modest, leaving the smallest annual jump for the Department of Labor's Consumer Pricing Index in nearly two and a half years. That's the action from the U.S. market. Now back to you in Mumbai. All right, that's what took place on the U.S. market. Now the clamor around Boeing Air Max 737s only growing. A lot of countries grounding it. So let's see how that comes about. But for the markets itself, here's some opinion coming in from the experts. I believe we're in a secular bull market, and I believe the valuations are fairly reasonable and that we're starting to see some of the policy uncertainty that's been weighing on the market and causing volatility in 2018. First, we saw it with the Fed. The Fed was key, right, the Fed backing off. We should get greater clarity on trade and, and perhaps even Brexit. The most important thing in all of it is as long as the U.S. currency, the dollar, stays relatively stable or even weakens some in here, there's very little reason to expect conditions to tighten anywhere in the world. and, and valuations are still generally reasonable. I think one way or the other, returns are going to have to slow after a 10-week rally that created double-digit gains across the world. We saw uh, what no one believes, a 20,000 gain for employment for the month of February. Uh, retail sale rep sales reports that in December and January put together show a decline. That coming to grips again with the fact that the U.S. economy uh, is not going to grow as rapidly as it did in a year that had tax cuts. Sort of living with all of that and getting the Federal Reserve, you know, to clearly help uh, sustain the expansion, to help protect the expansion instead of restrain the strength of it. All of these are things that take some time and change. Uh, and I think you'll see over time Federal Reserve rhetoric change, but they've got to do that in the context of a somewhat slower growth rate for the American economy. Well, that was all about the U.S. markets.